Hey, tool aficionados from around the world. Uh, welcome back to another episode. It's been like, uh, believe it or not, like five, six months uh, since I did my last video. Um, I recently came back from a vacation in Japan, and of course, I had to buy some tools. Uh, so I'm going to be doing uh, maybe a few episodes, uh, starting off with this one, uh, which are tools I purchased from a awesome tool store in uh, Osaka, which I've featured in the past. I'll leave the link in the uh, video description. So let's get on with it. Uh, as you might be able to tell, uh, some of these items are not uh, Japanese, but of course my channel is not exclusive to Japanese-only tools. But uh, having said that, uh, let's jump on with uh, this uh, uh, tool from um, Annex. Sorry, the label is covering there. That was, by the way, uh, roughly 12 bucks uh, Canadians or 10 bucks uh, American. Um, Alu Tool is the name. It's the name of the series, which was given to. Um, this, by the way, is kind of a rare tool. Um, in fact, the the store owner said um, the Alu Tool series is extremely rare. Uh, you, this is obviously NOS, uh, new old stock. Uh, hasn't been produced in not since the eight, uh, 90s, I think it was. Um, so a little bit of uh, detail description on the alu tool um, aluminum hand tool that's why it has the alu tool name on it so it's an aluminum handle uh, with uh, obviously a, a forged heat treated uh, steel shank um, yep yeah, produced in niigata uh, niigata is a um, uh, manufacturing uh, city in northern uh, Japan. Uh, it's, it has a very, his, it's historically quite significant uh, for producing uh, cutting tools. Uh, so when we think historically, that would be um, uh, like cutting tools, swords, uh, saws, woodworking tools, etc. Um, so the alloy tool is. Um, it, it was a collaborative series done by um, manufacturers, hand tool manufacturers in Niigata uh, to showcase their manufacturing capabilities. Uh, at the time, um, hand tools from Niigata didn't have quite the um, uh, domestic recognition that they wanted. So by producing something different, uh, Companies such as Annex, um, what else is there? Three Peaks, uh, at the time it would be Igo, um, and a few other companies. The names escape my mind right now, but uh, they had they worked jointly to produce a tool. Sorry, tools such as um, pliers, um, wrenches, uh, hook spanners, things like that. Hand tools which featured um, aluminum as uh, part of uh, the, the mass of the tool, but the key components, the things that were important, uh, such as the jaws, were um, using, uh, obviously, the appropriate uh, tool steel. So this was just one example that I purchased um, at a reasonable price. It's just something that I felt like I wanted to uh, keep um, perhaps as a conversation piece. So that's that. Um, you got here a aluminum handle. This has nothing to do with the Alu Tool series. Um, this is something from Victor. Uh, Victor is a manufacturer that's been around for a while in Osaka, Japan. So this is an aluminum body. detail there and it is for cutting hoses that was the main purpose that I had in mind so the machining there the aluminum uh, handle portion is is um, I'm, not, I'm not even sure how they produce it but uh, it's filed later 
by hand, I suppose. Yeah, it's definitely by hand. But uh, yeah, I thought uh, this was a tool that I haven't seen before from other manufacturers. Uh, I was impressed with the capacity. I have one, um, a similar type of tool from uh, Beta. Uh, but I needed uh, larger capacity for larger hoses, so this is the type of tool that uh, gives you a nice clean cut. So that's that. Uh, let's move on with something uh, NOS, uh, vintage. Oh, I don't know if I can get that. Oh, yeah. So this is a... Um, funny thing is my wife thought... She mistakenly thought I had bought uh, stainless steel uh, chopsticks, <laughs> like uh, like the Koreans like to use. Um, anyhow, these are actually uh, uh, pin punches by a manufacturer that is no longer... Oh, sorry, I'm wrong. Um, the company still exists. It's called... Uh, I could be butchering that name. Uh, Droisike. It's a German company. Uh, this is stamped. These are all stamped made in West Germany. Uh, I thought these were um, kind of cool. I haven't seen uh, such uh, narrow, skinny drift punches. So this uh, company, Doisica, again, sorry, uh, you guys can correct me. Or Would you do a video response? Probably not. <laughs> um, yeah, this company used to make uh, tools for... Um, it was office machines, namely typewriters. So they made uh, um, special tools to service and maintain those office uh, instruments, such as typewriters. So that's that. Moving with a vintage uh, PB Swiss screwdriver. That's a T10. Uh, at this point in time, they do not have any um, serial numbers. So, this is how they came back in the day. Swiss made. Yeah, just PB, not even PB Swiss or PB Bowman. Yeah. And these were apparently a, um, items from uh, Vera, German company. No stamping whatsoever on these though, but uh, I kind of just took their word for it. They, the tool store, by the way, uh, is second generation. They've been around for a very, very long time, and they just reek of tool knowledge, a lot of history. They know a lot about the tool industry, American, European, Japanese, uh, Taiwanese, China. So it was a, it's a great place to go if you are a tool aficionado like me. Um, next is this um, very interesting uh, piece from Wera. Apparently it was a tool, sorry, a sort of like a promotional uh, tool that was made for the Japanese market, um, at least according to what he told me. So as you can probably already notice, Torx on this end and Hex on this end. Strange. No, this was an actual product that they made. Uh, so you got the hex, and then you got the torx. So it's not, it wasn't a mistake. So with the old Wera logo, not the current one. So that kind of tells you there, at least that it's not a current uh, production item. Uh, I believe this was in the late 90s. Um, so the idea was to promote uh, uh, Torx uh, profile, Torx fasteners to the Japanese market, which I, from my understanding, wasn't uh, very common yet. And the hex portion, of course, uh, Japanese machinery and uses a lot of uh, hex uh, cap screws, Allen, in other words, Allen keys uh, to service uh, machinery, um, but. So what's different is that Wera has had their Wera, sorry, um, the Hex Plus feature. Hex Plus, yeah. So if you're uh, familiar with uh, um, 
If you're not familiar with uh, German uh, tools, innovation from Wera, such as the Hex Plus, uh, I would suggest uh, going over to um, the YouTube channel, German Tool Reviews. Uh, he does a good uh, explanation on the Hex Plus feature. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, so I had to get one. Okay, moving on with this item here. Um, what is it? It's actually, uh, I assume it's shot filled. Um, it is a hammer. It's a handleless hammer. Let's just hammer, handleless dead blow. <laughs> No, no, I got that wrong. Handleless dead blow hammer. <laughs> so you operate this with um, your hand. If you're in a confined area, uh, maybe you're working, uh, thinking of automotive here. If you're um, working in a confined area where that the handle of the hammer gets in the way, no swing room. That's when your hand or wrist might actually do a better job at uh, whatever you need to be doing so i thought this was a pretty cool idea it's got good heft to it um, the dead blow feature is also helpful soft mar faces on both ends this hap actually is completely unmarked nothing whatsoever sorry focus um, anyhow this was from a manufacturer in germany um, by the name of Halder. So H A L D E R is the name. That's that. Moving on with uh, this one here, it is a stainless steel uh, scissors uh, by the company called uh, Sipel. I'm probably not pronouncing that, pronouncing that properly. I've never heard of this uh, brand before S I P E L from uh, Switzerland. They produce a stainless steel um, series of tools, tweezers, pliers, uh, cutting tools, um, and scissors like this. It doesn't say Switzerland anywhere, uh, but uh, judging from uh, the finish, uh, I don't think this would be something produced in India or Pakistan. Uh, where I've seen a lot of stainless steel tools coming from. Not to say that uh, they can't produce uh, um, good craftsmanship, but uh, just judging by what I have seen so far, this is probably going to be made in Switzerland. Yeah. Okay, moving on with... What do I have left here? Oh, I got this little one here. This little guy, um, Koken fans out there, what the heck is it? What, that's, that's exactly what I said when I first saw this in the store. Uh, he just had a few laying around. Um, I was just stumped. I've never seen one, so I had to ask him, what the heck is this? Um, i never seen it in the catalog. Um, date code, 2016 May. So this is apparently a, uh, a tool that was uh, made for them, for the tool store, because uh, he was having uh, requests from people who install, uh, oh, I forget the proper terminology, I forget the trade. Um, they, it's, it's for basically assembly, assembly of a display boards. Um, I think it's, might be German assembly uh, display board something like that anyhow it was a request uh, and they took that request over to Kokan and they had this made so basically it is a super low profile um, what is that I think it's a T30 um, quarter inch drive uh, screwdriver uh, sorry um, bit socket and they produce this sleeve which fits in there and it is held in place with a set screw there so it's super shallow um yeah i just had to have it because it's not in the catalog <laughs> and last but not least uh these wrenches 
Yep. Colkin. Yep. I, sh I can't say they made wrenches. They certainly offered wrenches um, at one point in time. Uh, this was a special arrangement that uh, Colkin had with uh, Beta. So Beta is a Italian tool company. Um, so yeah, Colkin does not make wrenches. Let's just get that fact um, straight. Uh, so these were uh, produced by an Italian brand, uh, B-E-T-A, Beta. So this is the Italian tool company, and that's that's why you see the Italy there. Um, Beta Forty Two series is a the combination wrench series. When when they produced it for Coken, Coken they simply added a, a zero at the end. So that's why you see Beta Forty Two became Beta Four Twenty for Coken series. So these are NOS. Um, Beta only produced uh, one lot of Koken uh, labeled Koken stamped uh, wrenches so that also includes I had some other ones that I purchased previously uh, obviously the combination wrenches you got the double box offset this one actually is stamped with uh, Koken and Italy and Double box, uh, sorry, uh, double open end, a 550 series, and the double box offset is the 900 series. So this is my lot of the uh, of Koken wrenches, Koken Beta wrenches. Uh, these are rare. Um, I I simply asked whatever. What did you have left? Of uh, cloak and wrenches, and all he was able to bring out were, uh, yeah, these three wrenches, and that's it. That's all he had. So whatever, any uh, cloak and tool fans out there, if you find uh, wrenches, um, yeah, snap them up if you are interested in it. Otherwise, uh, let me know. <laughs> uh, so that's it, guys, uh, for this video. Um, you guys have a good day and uh, see you next time.